Yes, boys! Welcome back to the channel. So today we have over £400 worth of eBay sales to share. Now, a lot of this is obviously going to be uh, pertaining to the start of the dismantling of the business. Of course, as most of you will be aware at this point, I'm going to university in September and I can't have 1,200, 1,300 listings on eBay at university. Yes, I'm sure people will quote me ways of getting around it and being able to do it, but I simply can't do that and keep up with my university work, even if there was a way. For example, if I sent it all to Habu or I don't know, I had certain items here and I, I don't even know how I'd do it to be honest, but even if I could find a way, I wouldn't be able to do it with the amount of university work I've got to do it at, that I want to do. I want to also um, do other things at university, uh, get involved with writing a book or something like that. And also I'll be doing my investing on the side and I'll also be doing at least a little bit of reselling. So, but I couldn't have the reselling be a huge, huge thing. It just wouldn't work. So, um, I'm basically getting rid of loads of items, getting as much money out of my store as I possibly can. Um, at the moment, I'm still focusing on getting good profit out of items, but as we come close towards September, um, I won't be so worried about making huge profits on items because obviously I just need it gone at the end of the day. And then when I get to university, I'll take with me a handful of items that I'll have on eBay, 20, 30, 50, whatever my uni room can handle without it getting too crazy, of course. And, uh, and then obviously I will be sourcing, uh, well the, I don't even know whether I said which university I'm going but I'm going to Bangor University, that's the one that fingers crossed I'll be going to anyway. Um, and um, yeah, I will be sourcing down in Bangor, there's 13 charity shops that I've already checked. You know I've already checked. And uh, I'll be sourcing there and I'll be sustaining my business that way, hopefully. And also the neighbouring towns and stuff. I think Carnarvon's just down the road. Landudno, I don't think is far away. Um, Port Maddock, which I really like Port Maddock. It's a little bit further, but it's still not you know, missions away or anything like that. So uh, Conway, I don't think is too far away, maybe 20 minutes. So yeah, you know, I've got a good range of little towns around there and stuff. So it'll be cool. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the items I've been selling. I've been doing a few auctions as well to get rid of stuff that way. And uh, yeah, let's uh, get on with this because I've just rambled for about three minutes there, haven't I? So yeah, here we are. This Disney Store Stamp Toy Story Bullseye Plush. Uh, I paid a quid for this in a charity shop not long ago. This was so hard to get a good photo of. Honestly, it was really, really hard to get a good photo of. That's what I settled for in the end. I know it is an atrocious photo, but please try yourself to get this plush in a good position. I, it's so hard. I was trying for ages. That's another photo I did. I had to prop it up with my hand, and that's the best photo I could get, really. 14 99 for that. I'd say I paid a quid for that one. Next, we've got this vintage tape count uh, Mare Bourgemeister collectible heavy bronze. I get, I was guessing it was a token or a disc of some sort. Twenty nine ninety nine plus post on that. This just came out of an auction job lot. Possibly doesn't even cost me anything now because obviously I, I most probably paid for one of those auction job lots. But yeah, twenty nine ninety nine for that really nice little thing. Heavy bronze here. I, well, I think it was bronze anyway. Um, yeah, it was a really nice looking little item anyway there. So that's that one there. Next, uh, this sold around Valentine's Day actually, as you would expect. Me to you, Valentine's Rose, Grey, Blue Nose Bear, Teddy Bears. Little bundle there, twelve ninety nine plus postage. I got these from another reseller actually. I think I maybe paid him one pound, one pound fifty for each of these. So I might be maximum in at about three quid on these uh, for the two. But yeah, twelve ninety nine plus post on those. And obviously, as you would have suspected, as I said, uh, these these sold around Valentine's Day, so that was cool. Although saying that, we did. I think we sold the day after Valentine's Day, so that was a little bit odd. You would have thought someone would have bought them four or five days before Valentine's Day, so we got them in time for that, but I, I don't know, it's hard. But it's always on the brain, isn't it? When when you're around that sort of time of Valentine's Day, it's on the brain, so possibly people would have just been searching it for that. Um, vintage Wooden Etch Design Pedestal Musical Lullaby Plate. Uh, pretty interesting, this. 1999 there, plus post. It pay, played some sort of tune. It didn't say on it what the tune was, and I couldn't identify it, so I, I didn't put it in the title or anything. But someone still bought it, so that was pretty cool. 1999 plus post there. It was all working and everything. I just didn't know what the tune was specifically. Next, we've got this Vintage Kelson EPNS Silver Plate Claw Style Sugar Tongs. Now, I've actually sold these for 9.95 uh, maybe a couple of times. Maybe this, uh, this time and maybe one time before them. 
And, uh, yeah, these are always good. They always get around a tenner. I mean, you do have to wait a little while, but, I mean, that's the case with these kind of uh, vintage items. But still, you know, a tenner for just these little sugar tongs there. And, obviously, the attraction here is the, is the claws as well on there, claw design. But, yeah, ten quid for those. Just came in an auction job lot. Wouldn't have cost me a lot. I, I don't think I said for that one, but, again, it wouldn't have cost me a lot in one of these auction job lots. One or two quid at most. This thing will have probably only cost me about 50p, but, but that other thing, as I say, maybe one or two quid for that one but yeah pretty much uh, no cost to me anyway vintage brass horse and large carriage decorative metalware windowsill model 24 and a plus post on that now i did actually pay seven pound 50 for this in a charity shop i was reluctant to pay it and i was like mm, should i pay it shouldn't i but i thought you know what i've never had one of these before i want to sell one of these it'll just be interesting to sell uh, and it, you know it wasn't an incredibly brilliant one it was I think, I think you could say it's a kind of reproduction like one, um, but yeah, 24 99 plus my posting on that from 750 still I'm, I'm fairly happy with that, there's still a bit of profit in there. Next, the Bulletin Vintage Sports Car Club magazines, 1960s, 70s, 19 99 for these set of magazines, again these will have just come out of a ephemera job lot at the auction. Maybe the total cost to me there is three or four quid for all of those magazines. And that is going very, very high. It might not even be that. It'd probably be less than that. Uh, it'd probably be more like one or two quid, to be honest. But it depends on which job lot I've got it in, because I can't remember which job lot I got it in. If I got it in, there was one, there was a huge box of magazines and newspapers and everything that I got for a tenner. And if I got it in that one, they probably would have, these would have cost me maybe a quid. If I got it in a slightly more higher price one, they might have cost me maybe three or four quid for all. All of the magazines that you see there but yeah turn that into 1999 whatever the case so that's pretty cool next we've got this Eurostar facial tanner foldable tanning lamp with 12 tube solarium now um this was actually sat under my processing tables for a little while and obviously I wanted to do some auctions to get some things out because, you know, I, I can't keep this around. I want this want this gone so then get some money out of it and obviously that can go to university and I can uh, essentially get some more items gone as well and some more bigger items gone. So I paid, f uh, was it 40 or 50 for this? I can't remember whether it was 40 or 50 but it was no more than 50 but it was like either 40 or 50 quid for that and I turned it into 105. Uh, obviously plus my post there now not the best profit on that but as I've, as I've uh, said as I mentioned I do want to get some of these items out um, and, and just get them gone basically so I can really whittle down my stock so there's still some profit in that you know it's still double my money kind of gross there um, but yeah not quite the profit margin I'd be looking for um, in, in another circumstance basically possibly be looking for um, if I was paying 40 or 50 quid maybe well, minimum 120, but really 150 if I could. So, uh, yeah, but that's that one there anyway. Still a nice little profit. Next, vintage large silver plate EPNS dining cutlery job lot. Again, these have just come from a, uh, a job lot that I'm probably now in profit on. I've sold loads of cutlery. And what I do is I normally part it out in little sets and, and I can command some really decent money for it. And normally I can I get it at the auction for a big job lot, maybe 10, 20 quid plus commission, something like that. It depends on the job lot size. But this is just odds and ends and it went all the way up on auction to 20 quid. So I was actually pretty happy with that. There are, there are some nice pieces of cutlery in there. And whoever's bought that, it'll probably be a reseller. Because to be honest, I think you could probably get, make a little bit more out of that if you were bundling them up and stuff. But at this point, I've just just not got the time to be bundling all these little things up and waiting three months or four months for a sale. As I say, I want a lot of this stuff gone and then make a fresh start in September. And also in September, the thing I'm thinking of doing is cutting out pretty much all of the antiques and collectibles. And if I can, focus solely on toys. And if I can as well, focus on pretty much exclusively new and sealed items. Now, I don't know how well that's going to work out because... I don't know whether I'll be able to find all new and sealed items. It's whether that's the case. But yeah, I'm going to be cutting out a lot of the antiques and collectibles. Not to say that I won't ever pick them up. But I won't be picking them up um, as my main thing. Because they're just too slow. They're too slow to sell. And I need... When I'm at university... I need consistent sales. I'm only going to be having a small amount of items on eBay. And I still need to earn some money. I need to earn, you know, 100 quid, 
a couple of hundred quid net a month and you know that takes a little bit of effort so i do want things that are going to be quick turnaround and that aren't just going to stay on there i really i'm throwing myself in at the deep end and i need to um essentially just make a little bit of money out of it and i need to make the money fairly in a in a quick time at time space so i can't necessarily be thinking oh well i'm gonna have a thousand items on and it doesn't matter if things go uh, or when we go because i've not got that luxury anymore at university with the space and stuff so yeah I'll be definitely, it'll be a change up with my buying strategy at university as well. So this is vintage large Greek Roman uh, bust head sculpture artwork clay terracotta. Wasn't quite sure. It almost looks like terracotta to be inside of there. I don't know whether you can see it there. But this just got one beard, $9.99. Again, we'll just come in an auction job lot. Probably cost me nothing, basically, this. Or if it if I'm attributing any cost to it, it's maybe one quid, two quid, something like that. But to be honest, I reckon that this has come in a job lot that was very, very cheap indeed. And therefore, as an individual cost from that job lot, it's hardly cost me anything. So $9.99 plus postage on that. Uh, I didn't really know whether this would go on auction or not, if I'm being totally honest but it did actually go so that's pretty cool uh P ps2 console unit with power scart leads and third party controller this i tested i actually tested with my dad because he said oh that looks like a cool thing but why don't we have a go on the ps2 and so i'm there on a racing game with him and he does a uh, poor guy doesn't even know what he's doing he doesn't know what he's doing on this racing car he's doing this and he he's crashing into walls and crashing into everything i don't even know and then i pick up the controller and I was like, yeah, this is, oh, this is awesome. And he's like, how the hell, how are you driving that? But of course, obviously, I've, I've grown up with technology and stuff. So I, I know, you know, I know these, even though I didn't know the buttons of the game specifically, I don't think I've ever been on the game, but you just pick it up, don't you? So, um, yeah, but it was funny to test it with him and it was on um, FIFA and stuff as well. But he gets bored with things so quickly. So he was on it for about, 20 minutes and he was like yeah it's a bit boring i mean video games aren't really his thing anyway so i suppose that's kind of a key uh if it, if it was more his thing he'd probably wouldn't get bored as much but yeah winning bid was 17.99 on that plus postage i don't know exactly how much this is cost oh no this was the one from the charity shop i think it cost me a fiver from the charity shop yeah that was the right one from basically a charity shop manager gave it me in a bag he came out of the uh, the back room and he said oh i've got this ps2 uh, i don't I, I think he said i don't know whether it's working or anything uh, and yeah i think i paid a fiver for it so five for that into 18 quid plus post uh, next we've got this ps2 silent hill 2 special edition now the disc and everything inside was in really good condition but the the, the look at the case it's just it's horrendous the case the case is really really bad condition um now i watched this on at 9.99 plus post i think i paid three quid for this and it went up to 11.50 so again there's a little bit of profit in that now i don't know why i've put 3.49 postage on it um because obviously that was just a large letter so i don't know about that anyway but obviously i just put that on it i must have been obviously listing quite a lot on that particular night and then i just randomly screwed up the postage charge there um but yeah 11.50 on that so i was pretty happy with that next we've got these vintage mid-century style transfer printed small glasses with round spot design now this comes from something that never actually came to fruition so me and mel from sparrow's end were um thinking of doing a basically a couple of videos on our channel which we would call seller swap and um we would send a box of items to each other, right, for the value of 20 quid. So we'd each have 20 quid and we'd spend 20 quid on items and then we'd swap the boxes over between us. So I would get the things that she spent 20 quid on and she'd get the things that I spent 20 quid on. Anyway, we, we get so far with it. We send each other boxes. We tell each other, oh, well, we're going to list them now. But to be honest, we were busy with other stuff at the time and it kind of just fizzled out that that whole idea and so we said well what we'll do is we'll obviously list the items and stuff and we'll tell each other uh the sale price and stuff but we never actually did we never recorded the video and i thought that would be a brilliant video to record and if anyone else wants to do it you know with someone else not necessarily with me because i don't know whether i've got the the time i'm not i'm not really sourcing that much at the moment because i'm just focusing on um actually clearing stuff out the shop at this point um but yeah so i'm not really sourcing that much but if anyone else wants to do it it's a brilliant idea for a video uh it just it's a long tail idea for a video because you've got to actually go out and source 
record that bit, then actually record you packaging up the box, then obviously send that out to the other person, then you've got to list the items, record yourself listing the items, then wait about four weeks till you get a few sales, then record a summary of the comparison between both of you. So it's a very, it, it's a video that if you start it, it's going to be eight weeks in the making or something. So, and maybe that's why we kind of fizzled out with it as well, because it was such a long video to make. So, uh, yeah, but this, so it's hard to actually say what these cost. I think these cost Mel maybe um, two quid, three quid, one pound fifty, something like that. It was around that one pound fifty to three quid, something like that. Um, and I put them on for $14.99 there plus post. So, yeah, it was a bit of a weird one that I didn't actually kind of pay anything for them, but I kind of did at the same time because Mel got my items. So, yeah, it, it's a weird one. But anyway, I still got $14.99 sale price for them. So that's those. Next, this vintage studio pottery somewhere, milk jug, swan pond design, 14 dollars Actually, no, I accepted a best offer of 12 quid on this, uh, plus postage. I paid three quid for this a while ago, just in a charity shop. I mean, these things I always used to pick up, and I was always very aware that there would be longer tail items, and I used to say it in videos as well. I'd say, I'm picking this up now, but I know it's not going to sell for quite a while. But they do sell, you know, you pick these things up one, two, three quid. You can flip them, flip them into 12 quid to 15 quid um, after a few months. And why not, really, if you've got the space? Uh, if you haven't got the space, then obviously not, there's not much point doing it. Uh, focus on more quicker flipping items. But if you've got the space, go for it. And then, finally, we've got these Doctor Who BBC collectible sci-fi figures bundle. Martha Jones and the Scarecrows here. 9 95 plus postage. This is from the uh, Human Nature and the Family of Blood uh, episodes here. So, 9 95 plus post on that. Again, I'm in profit on these Doctor Who figures by now. So, yeah, whatever's out of that after posting fees is pure profit. So, yeah, that's it. That is all the items to share with you. So, as I say, in sales updates in future... Um, you may see items where I'm quoting prices I paid for them and uh, it might be like there's not much profit in them and stuff. But as I say, I am winding this down now and I'm obviously uh, needing to get rid of quite a lot of items. So that's the reason why. And also, um, just to give you uh, another thing that it might be a bit of a disappointment to a lot of people. But over the next few months specifically, I probably won't be doing hauls or if I do haul videos on this channel, it'll only be the very odd one. You know, for example, when I really get itchy feet and or, it, or is that the right word? Yeah, itchy feet. And I have to go to the charity shops and I have to pick up a few items. Uh, but then come September, when I'm in university, the hauls, the reselling hauls will return again. So it's not that they're going away forever or anything, but... They might be in short supply, and that's possibly why um, it may be a good idea for me to search out some new content to do in the interim between the time of now dismantling the business and then obviously um, reformulating it in a way at university and then starting afresh there really uh, with the whole videos and sales updates like that. But I will continue with the sales updates because there's going to be plenty of sales coming through or hopefully there will be. So that being said, thank you very much for watching. Please, if you will, subscribe to the channel. If uh, you did like it, then please do hit the thumbs up. And if you've got any comments, questions or queries, then please do wipe them down below. And I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys. Watch it, I'll slow down.